By family, you know, I have got a 12-year-old daughter and a 10-year-old son. And we love going away in the caravan. We love going camping. Actually, we just got back from down south for the long weekend. Anyone else went away for the long weekend? Yep. Okay, beautiful weather too. Now, we've been going to the same caravan park for, I think we worked out on the weekend, it's about five years. Same caravan park, so the kids know everyone. When we go down for each public holiday, they know who's gonna be there, what's going on, and they've pretty much got free reign. I love it because my idea of a great camping trip is to kick back and relax. We go down with another family, we get out the nibbles, we have a few drinks, and we relax, right? So earlier on this year, I think it was around February, uh, we were down there and my daughter was, my 12 year old daughter was playing in the pool. Now the pool was probably, I'd say probably from here to where you got uh, your name tags out the front, a few zigzags in between. We're sitting around having a few drinks, it's late afternoon, she's been in the pool for a couple of hours with her friends and my daughter has the most distinctive scream you've ever heard. Now for most parents, you can put a room full of kids screaming in there and they can tell you which one is their child screaming. I don't know how, but we just know it. We just hear it and you just know it's your kid. So my daughter starts screaming. My husband and I heard it mid-sentence, up we got. We thought, wow, what is happening? So all we know at this point is that she's screaming. What's going through my head? Is she dying? What's going on? I can't believe I've left her. How hurt is she? Do I need to, if I need to take her to hospital, I've been drinking. What kind of mother am I? So I start freaking out, right? My husband and I both jump up and we start running. Now I've told you before, my husband's not very emotionally intelligent. So here's what was going through his head. Amelia, stop screaming, <laughs> stop screaming. I don't know if there's ever been somebody that literally stopped screaming when they were told to stop screaming. Anyway, that's what's going through his head. I'm running after him and I'm freaking out. I'm thinking, what am I going to come up to? Like, how badly is she injured? What's going on? So at this point in time, I had that little bit of information that came in through my senses, came in through my ears and I heard a scream. At that point, that dotted line headed straight to my amygdala. And my amygdala started freaking out, right? I was scared. I was scared, I didn't know what I was gonna front. So I'm running around to the pool area and as I come through the pool fence and I see her, and at that point, by the time I get there, I'm feeling shame, guilt, everything that I can possibly feel, right? And I'm seeing all these other mothers sitting around the pool watching their kids like I probably should have been, thinking, wow. And my daughter, I saw her and she was walking with another mother who happens to be mother of the year. She's walking along, her arm around my daughter, making sure she's okay. Now, the minute I saw my daughter, I got more information in. I could see she was walking, tick, she's okay. I could see she was still crying, so that's okay. I could see her face was covered in blood. That's okay, it was only a broken nose. But the information started coming to me, right? And all this information went in through my thalamus into my neocortex, and my neocortex started processing it. And at that point in time, when that information went to my amygdala, my emotional reaction changed. My emotional reaction now was, I'm the parent here, I need to calm her down, I need to let her know she's okay. So I went from freaking out, being scared to shame and guilt, to walking in there to love and joy and saying, it's gonna be okay. Okay, it's only a broken nose, we'll be fine, we'll go and clean it up, come and sit down, it'll all be good. Now the reason why I tell that is that this emotional hijack happens every single day every single day and it's a chemical reaction it happens in the workplace it happens in university it happens in school it happens at home we get the slightest bit of information through and our emotions react if you're in the workplace you may hear a word like restructure and straight away we react if you're in a testing environment or in a classroom environment and you hear the words exam spot exam our emotions start to react Every single time we have that little piece of information, our emotions will start jumping to conclusions until we have more information. Now this happens around and it's important to recognize when people are going through an emotional hijack, that they don't have a lot of control over it, but it's important to try and get as much information to them as humanly possible, as fast as possible. If you're going through an emotional hijack, the best thing you could possibly do is ask questions or get those answers and acknowledge the fact that you're going through that emotional hijack.